Okay, good morning, everybody. Morning in California, <laughs> where I am, and I, I think you are joining me from very different places all over the world. I will be multitasking a little bit because we've got a chat running at the same time, and I will have an eye on the chat as well. So yes, welcome to this, and you know, I'm so happy to be here. And Ivy, thanks so much for putting this together and creating this symposium virtually. So it's it's amazing. I'm so honored to be a presenter here. Feel really, really lucky. And let me just introduce myself myself briefly to those of you who might not know me. My name is Carla Bauchmüller, and uh, I help women over 40 to connect more deeply with their horses in the saddle and on the ground. And centered riding obviously is a big, 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 big part of this because that is all about connecting, especially as riders, right? We really want to connect with the horses that deeply and to use our bodies, our body awareness to really do this. And let me just maybe just briefly say, started riding as a kid and I grew up in Germany and probably my accent and my last name give me away, right? So I grew up in Germany in the German system, which is quite strict, right? So I got yelled at a lot. And one of the things I was told as a writing student then didn't really make sense to me, right? So when all weren't even explained, like you have to bring your heels down, right? Sit up straight, right? Probably things that you've heard as well. And, uh, you know, what do we do with that? Like sit up straight, makes you all tense, pushing your heels down, makes you all tense. You feel it's not really working, but you don't really understand what it is all about. So um, I was so lucky to then actually came, come across center writing and uh, other modalities as well. I took a two year full time training in a, at an equestrian center that actually works on these things, like on all the alternatives to what we know from just this strict kind of writing and teaching that some of you probably are used to as well. Yeah, so I feel really lucky that I came across that early in my career as a writing instructor 30 years ago. So that said, I'm a set of writing instructor level three right now. I'm a yoga teacher, meditation instructor. I also went through the trainer levels in the German system. So a trainer A in the German system. So you can tell there's lots of things that came together in my life and my teaching. And that's what I want to pass on to you some of that today. And it will be interactive. So we're going to do exercises together. I want to lead you through a couple of things that you can do with me just on your chair. So don't worry about it. You don't have to you know, get up or find room to stretch out. We'll just do it on our chairs and talk about centering and growing with some little exercises that we'll do. And then you can use the live chat. There's a chat function in this and just really pop in comments, questions that you might have. And uh, then after presenting and going through one exercise together, I will give a little room for Q&A so that we can also bring your comments and your questions down. Okay, so I think we're ready to get started with the actual exercises. Let me just give you a little bit of background what we are going to do together today. So the topic of this symposium is center and grow. And because I love to work on not just the physical, but also the emotional and energetic kind of, you know, spiritual side of things as well. I wanted to take this topic into that direction a little bit today. So what we'll talk about is about energy centers that I find go really hand in hand with the center, center and grow idea. So centering, meaning wonder, center position of the pelvis, but there's a lot that's going on energetically and emotionally when we actually find this center, right? So, and as a meditation instructor and also a life coach, I'm always interested in these intersections between what's happening really physically and emotionally at the same time. So how that really goes hand in hand. Okay, good. So, let me see if we've got anything in the chat yet. Don't think so. And we will have an eye on that as well. So 
if you want to pop something in the chat and you just let me know where you are from, you know, where I want to make this interactive and really keep a, keep a connection and conversation going here. But at the same time, I want to get something done. Right? So, so broad pelvis, I brought a pelvis. So let's talk about the centering part first. Right, centering meaning lots of things, but um, let me just say that for now, for here, centering really bringing your, your pelvis, the center of your body in a balanced position that will affect other body parts, but it will also affect your emotional and mental and energetic state. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So. That's why we need the pelvis here and an understanding of the pelvis. Oftentimes we have kind of an intellectual understanding what the pelvis is, but really feeling it and feeling into it and understanding where it is and what it does makes such a difference. So let's do that together. Let's have a look at this pelvis right here, right? So We'll talk about a few things around the pelvis today, but what I wanted to start with is finding the seat bones, right? So the seat bones are the base of the pelvis, which we, again, maybe intellectually know this, but uh, what do we actually do with this, right? And where is it and how can we really learn to communicate with our seat bones? I find the seat bones are our main means of communication when we are riding. We can turn the horses from the seat bones. We can like, speed them up and slow them down, etc. So it's really important to understand where they are. So let's find them. Let's place one hand under the seat bone. Let me just tilt that camera a little bit so you can see me here as well. Right? So let's place one hand and just one hand for now. Let's place it one hand under a seat bone, right? And uh, that might not be that comfy. I hope you've got a little bit of a cushion so you're not squeezing your hand too much. Well, just take a moment to allow your seat bone to really relax and kind of rest in your hand. And now let's just move a little bit, like pull it back. Doesn't have to be too exacting. Just move a little bit back and forth, side to side and feel how that changes the pressure on your seat bone. Yeah, and how the seat bone actually moves within the flesh. It moves back and forth a bit. There's sometimes a little bit more weight on it, sometimes a little bit less weight, right? So yes, there's a lot of movement possible. And sometimes we feel the seat bones are kind of their, their own thing, but they're really connected to the pelvis and every movement with our torso with the pelvis moves the seat bone. Yeah, so let's pull the hand out and just take a moment to compare both sides, right? If you are only a little bit like me, you'll feel about this much lower on this side that you sat on, right? So it's all the fascia, the muscles, everything around the, the seat bone actually relaxed. And now we're sitting so much closer. So when you feel now the connection of your seat bone to the chair, I'm guessing that feels very different to the side where you did not sit on your hand, right? So let's get ourselves even. See, this can be a reason for unevenness, right? And that makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, let's put the other hand under the seat bone to get us even. And again, just a little bit of a moving, moving back and forth, maybe side to side. And this seat bone might already feel different. Right, might feel like it's maybe moving a little less or a little bit more, or it feels pokey or less pokey. Yeah, so there's really, it's really interesting how the sides also are different. Okay, good. So let's pull the hand out. Let's take a moment to feel the connection of your seat bones to the chair right now. So you can, tell, you can tell what we're doing here together is we're doing exercises on a chair that translate directly into what you can do in your next ride. So in your next ride, if you have someone to lead your horse, be, be safe with this one. It's not the safest position in the world to sit on your hand like this, right? So uh, be safe with it. Have someone lead your horse, but just placing a hand under the seat bone and getting an understanding of what your seat bone actually does when you're riding can just really make a huge difference. Just awareness 
right? Awareness of what is happening in the body. And then obviously you need tools to move it into the right direction. But awareness is a fantastic starting point. You cannot change things that you're not aware of, right? Okay, good. So now I hope we've got some connection of the seat bones to the chair. Just take a moment to really feel into this and how the seat bones are really sitting there and they would be sitting in the saddle communicating with your horse when you're riding, right? Now, let's play with the pelvis position and let's take our time for this. So we're going to go into each position and you do not have to, like we're going to move the pelvis, but please do not like extend, overextend the back or, you know, push yourself too much into an extreme position. You can do very little and you'll still feel the effects. Yeah, because we want to stay in the positions a little bit more. I'm going to show, demonstrate them a little bit exaggerated so that you can see what I mean. But uh, please use judgment. Don't hurt yourself <laughs> when moving your back. Okay, good. So, and you can just relax your arm by arms by your sides. I will leave them here so that you can actually see my pelvis. So I will even place them on the pelvis. I think I'm going to yeah, turn a little bit more, even like this. But you can just relax the arms by your sides. Good. So let's let's just start moving the pelvis. And when you look at the pelvis, it's shaped. And when I crack this model again, it is actually shaped like a bowl. And when you add the abdominal wall to this, see how this is really like a bowl shape. So when you picture this bowl being filled with water. Yeah, so let's fill this bowl with water. And now when you hollow your backs, and as I said, don't do too much, just a little bit is enough. When you hollow your backs a little bit, and now the bowl would tilt forward, the water would spill out in the front. So now let's take a moment to feel into this. What happens to the other body parts? Now, the bodies do all kinds of things, but what my body does right now is I'm bracing through the back. So feel into your back, what your back does. I'm bracing like everything gets hollow here. I feel tension in my neck. Right, I feel like I would probably, if I were sitting in the saddle right now, I would be tipping forward, right? So I'd be losing my balance this way. Yeah, so the other body parts are affected. Connection of the seat bones to the chair, what's that like for you? Right, for me, the seat bones are pointing back now, the connection is not as clear. And when you feel into your breathing, when you're in this, and maybe just for a moment, you might go into a little bit more of that movement. Yeah, if the breathing doesn't go through your entire body, the torso, the upper body anymore, and it feels stuck a little bit up here, doesn't it? Right? And it's, it feels a bit like a disconnection between the upper part of your torso and the lower part. Right, so we're not really connecting through the body. Everything is a little bit disconnected. Breathing is a little more shallow, right? There's more tension. So this position can very easily be connected with too much tension. And also with this like kind of being cut off here, it's like the energetic flow. Yeah, we'll talk energy, but an energetic flow is it's kind of cut off too, right? So it's like your upper body and your legs are not in not one piece, right? So we're cutting ourselves into different pieces instead of having a connected awareness of our body. Yeah? When you feel into this as well, when you think about the emotion that could come with this position, let's give it a moment. What emotion do you think that is? Probably anxiety, right? It's probably a bit of anxiety, a little bit of fear that this position is connected with. And I just relax for a moment so that you can, you really don't hurt your backs. But there is actually the fear reflex in us that can show like a, <gasps> right? So everybody has probably been there when the horse spooked and we went, <gasps> Right, so like hands up and bracing, or this can also be a fear reflex. 
But so we go into that fear reflex and you can see even my body, how that disconnects me. It brings my center of gravity up and actually becomes more or less like a self-fulfilling prophecy because now I am in a position where I'm not safe and not centered. Yeah, so I'm actually bringing myself into that position and the emotion and the physical position also go hand in hand. So the emotion can get me into this position, but it works the other way around as well. When you are too much in this position, you can bring yourself more into a fearful and anxious feel. Yeah, so it, it can actually work the other way around. I really find that so fascinating, right? So it's like, yes, an emotion will have a physical response, but it's when we are, are in a physical position that can actually also engage that emotion, right? So we can make ourselves a little bit more fearful. Also, I think because we just subconsciously know that this is not a good or safe place to be when we are in the self, because we are not connecting, we are not feeling the horse the way we wanted to. Good, let's do the opposite. Let's now again picture our, our bowl. We'll, let's fill it with water. Now when we tilt it this way, the water would spill out in the back. Yeah, and just again, take a moment to feel into the other body parts, how the other body parts are following into this. Like in my case, again, your body might do something different to just feel what you're doing. In my case, the shoulders start slouching. I'm collapsing here a little bit. Um, and I'm, I'm not breathing that well anymore, right? So kind of squeeze together here. And when you feel into the connection of the seat bone to the chair, that it's, it's a little, I'm sitting a bit more on the pockets, a little wider, but it's the seat bones would be pointing forward at this stage, right? And see how I'm really slouching right now. And then you feel again into the flow I talked about earlier, like your connection from your upper body to your lower body. How that it's, it feels again kind of disconnected, and also what do you feel in me like energetically right now, right or emotionally? Like if I were in this for longer, see how this is kind of low energy. I could get myself a little bit depressed if I were in that. By the way, it's just you know when I'm talking with you like this in that position, feel how this is kind of uh, why it makes everybody a little. Yeah, low energy, right? If I talk to you like this, you go like, oh my God, <laughs> right? What is that? So the position of your body here has really also something that the horse will feel, even if you just do it on the ground. If I'm next to my horse like this, or if I'm next to my horse like this, my horse will not be able to really feel me in the way that the horse really wants to. Yeah, okay, so when we're in this position now, kind of slouchy, and then someone might say, hey, you have to sit up straight, right, bring your shoulders back, right, and that gets everything really tense too. And here, that is kind of low energy, and the other body parts, again, follow suit to what the, the pelvis did. Okay, now, let's move the pelvis back and forth a little bit. doesn't have to be a big movement. Still picture the water and you, you move your pelvis back and forth until you're not losing any water. So the pelvis has this bowl shape being filled with water and now we're moving the pelvis until we feel we are not losing any water. That's kind of your neutral position. Yeah, so it might still have a little bit of a little hollow here in the back, it's fine. All right, that's the neutral. When you feel into it, that probably feels already stronger, right? You feel into your breathing, feels probably more open, your shoulders find a better position, all of that. Yeah, so that's the neutral position. I like to add a tiny little tilt to the pelvis to really get the the center of gravity down, really connect to your horse, but let's make that a tiny, tiny, tiny little movement. So from the neutral that we have here, 
Let's now picture a dragon tail, like really the fantasy creature, a dragon, a dragon tail that's hanging from your tailbone. Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, so it's hanging vertically down from your tailbone. And it's really like a big, heavy dragon tail. So it's hanging from the tailbone, making your spine elongate a tiny little bit, right? So it's really not much of the spine. Oh, this, this is better, right? So if this is, this is my neutral. And now I do the dragon tail. See how small that movement was. Yeah, it's a tiny movement. It's just helping me to lengthen the spine, to relax a little bit more in the lower back. Like lots of students I work with, when I first show them this dragon tail positioning, they find themselves with less back pain after. Right? Oftentimes we help we hold tension in a little bit of a brace position here. And when we understand and learn about the dragon tail and you use it in everyday life, that can really help you release back pain through your lower back. And when you think about it in riding, obviously now you're connecting your seat bones better, right? I'll just take a moment to feel into it. You're connecting your seat bones. You are probably have more stability here. Now your skeleton is in a position that's really meant to be in, right? So your shoulders can just rest on your rib cage, your head can balance on top of the spine, right? So everything can really organize itself. Yeah, and let's just take a moment now to feel into the strength that's been created from your abdomen now, from your belly, right? So. Let's talk belly and let's talk about it as an energy center as well, more like a meditation, right? From a meditation point of view, really feel yourself into that in that position. Even hold your hands a moment on your abdomen and feel into kind of the, the sense of grounding and strength and connection that you can really get from your abdomen. Right, so from this really centered position, from this strong position, you, you can gain lots of clarity, you can be the leader for your horse that you want to be. I'm just taking a moment to feel into this. Just really feel how the pelvis is the foundations, the base of your torso, and the seat bones connecting to the chair, to the horse, in this really stable way right now, right? It has something unshakable to it. You're here, you're grounded, you're present. Yeah, and this could become a meditation, right? If you just stayed in this for a little longer, just feeling into the sense of stability, centeredness, groundedness, bringing your energy really into this quiet state of connecting to the chair in this case and to the saddle when you are on your horse. Okay, fantastic. I would like to take a little moment to answer some questions if there are any. So let me know. Let me see if I can see. <clears throat> okay. Okay, are there, is there anything, Ivy? Are you seeing any comments? I'm uh, not yeah, seeing I, right now, so. I saw, do you suggest? Ah, yeah, here we go. Here we go. I got them. Yeah. <laughs> I found them. Very good. So let me, yeah, let me scroll through. I think I find. Uh, yeah, greeting from Austria, from Finland, North Carolina, Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden. Awesome. I, that's so fantastic. Tübingen in Germany. Yeah, Lotta. Hi, nice seeing you again. Wonderful. Beautiful. Canada, Rhineland, Norway, Switzerland, Sweden. Fantastic. Beautiful ladies. That's amazing. Okay, let's see. Do we have any comments or questions on this piece that I just said? <clears throat> so, Evie said, spilling the water backwards makes it difficult to breathe as well. 
Yes, right? You're collapsing here, right? It's like everything's like, oh, kind of squished together. And, and you're, you know, we have to think about it that way, that our skeleton is made in a certain way to function properly. And that's true in everyday life, and that's true in writing, right? And when we get our skeleton to work the way it's meant to, then it's so much, everything becomes so much easier. Yeah, so when I, I teach my, my class and my programs, um, I always ask my ladies to really think of, of writing as 24-7, or of this body awareness, 24-7. You want to be aware of this, like when you walk from your living room to your kitchen, right? Become aware of your pelvis, become aware of your dragon tail, become aware of the way you're breathing, and really integrate that as part of your life. It will... It's, it's really life-changing, literally. Okay, so Christian said, let's stop breathing. Oh, well, the seat bones, yeah, when, yeah, palm up usually, right? When you want to sit on the seat bones and feel the seat bones, I like the palm up because then you can really feel the seat bone in there. When you do it in the saddle, first of all, make sure you're safe. Secondly, make sure that you take off your rings because if you've got a nice diamond ring, <laughs> first of all, it's not going to be very comfy. And when you pull it out, you'll scratch yourself, right? So just so that you, just that you remember that. Um, okay, so that explains why the tense tra traditional stiff riders so often have more fear, anxiety. Thank you, Carla, for making that connection emotional and body. Yes, right? Like when, when someone is this, like, well, as I said, as a German, I got yelled at so much, I'd sit up straight, and I was anxious riding anyways because we had this yelling instructor, right? So I was tense anyways, and then sit up straight makes you even more tense, right? So it really works vice versa. And you can see into this. Okay, very good. So now we have to explain the dragon tail. Yeah, there are, there are different ways you can think about pulling the pubic bone up right if people are a little bit more into feeling muscles or their skeleton you can think about pulling the pubic bone up a little bit because that's the effect that it has right so i can think about lengthening down here I can think of any other kind of weight at the bottom of the tailbone that just kind of lengthens the back so yes there are definitely different ways and it's a really good point uh, about imagery in general i love using images but with images, you have to make sure that when you hear an image as a writer, you play with it, you try it out, but do not try to make every image work for you. Some images might not work for you. Like a dragon tail might not work for you. Then don't try to make it work. Just really look at, okay, that's the effect that it has on me. Oh, that's really what I want to feel. That feels great. Or if it doesn't, there are other images, other ways of feeling it too. So that's a really good point here. Uh, what about the adjustments happening up the shoulders, neck compensations? How to understand whether they're right or bad compensations? Yeah, that's, that's a good one too. Um, so I think I have to cut this a little bit short because I've got more I want to show you ladies. But um, yes, when, you know, when it's uh, compensation in the body really happens, like let's say when I'm hollowing here, then I'm probably pushing the, sh the shoulders back and the head back, right? I always find when I start with bringing the pelvis into a center position, it's more likely that the other body parts can find their alignment. So start there, and yes, you might still have to find out what other body, body parts need more alignment. Shoulders are something that likes to be really tense and forward and all of that as well. So they usually need a, a bit more attention as well, head as well, but start with the pelvis, get the pelvis into the center position because when you don't, then the other body parts don't stand a chance, right? So the pelvis, especially in writing, it's the foundation of your position. Good, but let's, uh, let's talk shoulders. <laughs> Sorry if I wasn't able to answer all the questions, but I want to show you a few more things. Um, <laughs> okay, Alexa has got something to say in the background. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about shoulder position and opening through the chest, right? Because we've gotten, we have this right now with the pelvis position. Um, that was the first thing that we worked on. 
And uh, then the other thing is now really looking at the shoulder position. And when we talk about growing, let um, me just shut Alexa. Alexa, shut up. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> So I just have to comment on that part. I didn't want to I switched off all my phones and everything. I hadn't thought about that. Like, oh, so Carla, fun. hey, I'm so happy it happened to you too. I usually have a crying baby on the background. So <laughs> I'm so happy I'm not the only one with background noise. <laughs> I know. And yeah, so Alexa usually doesn't talk to me for that long, but today she decided to like hold the whole lecture. <laughs> okay, but now she's shut up. Okay, good. So uh, talking about the growing, right? When we talk about growing, so we've got the centering going on. And now let's, I take growing today a little bit figuratively more in expanding ourselves, expanding ourselves from the heart center. Yeah, so as I said, I'm a meditation instructor as well. So I'm really interested in this aspect of riding and being with the horses too. So. What I mean by this is that an open shoulder position, an open chest, like not this kind of crazy, but an open chest uh, really opens up the energetic heart center. The energetic heart center is the center of your chest. Right? You might have heard of chakras and things, but you know, let's uh, just say heart center to okay, keep it a little bit more neutral for today. right? So it's not the physical heart, it's the center of your chest. And this, in this center of your chest, there's a lot of energy, emotions that sit there and that you can really also use to connect and communicate with your horsewood. So oftentimes when we find ourselves hiding the heart center a bit, right? So see how this is kind of a protective position when we're slouching. So again, the physical position and the emotional energetic position can really go hand in hand. So I'm maybe protecting, or maybe I'm kind of aggressively pushing out, right? That goes hand in hand with the, the things that we talked about earlier with the pelvis position, right? So I might be pushing out, but what I want is this kind of really open feel, open feel in the shoulders and in the chest at the same time. So that can really create that connection, yeah? So let's do a little exercise on the shoulders for this one first. That's a, the bubble gum. And when we picture, because let me, let me actually explain that a little bit more. So what's happening with the shoulders really easily is that they drop forward like this, right? And now I might be yelled at <laughs> or just told from my instructor to bring the shoulders back. See how I'm trying to bring the shoulders back just creates more tension. My head might even compensate more, like I'm all tense now and the shoulders are really not in the position they're supposed to still, right? So what needs to happen instead, and now watch my magic trick. It's a rotation, yeah? So instead of trying to push the shoulder back, see how I rotated the shoulder? And now I can open through here. Now the shoulder blades actually find their position on the rib cage. Yeah, and now we are actually open through here. Yeah, so from here, it's rotation. Yeah, so everything opens up this way. So let's do this. I've got a cool exercise for you with this. So if you picture chewing gum on your shoulders, and you grab that chewing gum with your fingers and your, your elbows can just, you know, slightly point like diagonally forward like this, they can stay relaxed. And then you pull on that chewing gum and then you create this half circle until your upper arm is back at your sides. And now you turn the hand forward. Yeah, see how that opened up the chest <clears throat> it's a really simple exercise that really opens up the chest, brings the shoulders into this really good and open position. Let's do that one more time. So, and do not try to bring the, uh, the elbows back. It's not necessary. You can really keep the elbows in that position, pull, and then bring the upper arm back to your sides, and then your riding position. I might feel how this really opened up the shoulders. 
right? How the breathing is, is easier now and uh, how you can now really feel the chest, feel the heart center. Yeah, and from here, let's just take a moment to feel into this entire area of your chest. And allow for this breathing to happen. Maybe take a moment to feel how there is more flow, right? And then you can really, from here, the next step is to also energetically feel and connect to your horse. I like to do this through something very simple. I call it the magical moments. Magical moments are these moments where you feel connected to your horse. It can be something very simple, just a um, walk hard transition where you didn't have to use your reins much, or you know, it doesn't have to be anything big, but you feel like, oh, that was one of these ah moments. Right, and when you just right now remember one of these ah moments where it felt really okay, that was really you had a moment where you were connecting with your horse, you felt like this is it, right? This is what I do it for. And just take a moment to remember one of these moments right now and think of this ah, that it, the joy that it brought, yeah, this uplifting through your heart where you felt like. Oh, wow, that was nice. That was, that was the connection that I'm hearing for. Yeah, I feel this might like really open the heart even more and open it energetically. Or you're like, ah. And I actually, when I write, I like to use sounds. And sounds like this where I go, ah, right? It's, and it's, it's the horses pick up on that. They love that type of energy. And they get really motivated when you, when you say something like that, we go, ah, oh, a good boy, or, you know, something like that. But I sometimes like to keep it that simple and just use an ah sound. Yeah, because that's really opening the heart center. And that's where you can connect and feel your horse from as well. Yeah, so you feel this ah, right? And when you just do it right now, if you just do it, Oh, something joyful where you remember the moment where you have this magical moment, that connection with your horse. It was <clears throat> just, ah. Yeah, see how that's been like opening up the chest. Yeah. Yeah, and that again, that could end up in an entire meditation where just take that levity in the heart, that openness in the heart. And really feel into that. I find, and that's a bit of a side note right here, but I find that these this joy, this the magical moments, they are actually an antidote to perfectionism. Right? Because sometimes we are writing and go like, oh, this wasn't quite right, this wasn't quite right, me, 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 right? So we are beating ourselves up for all the things that we are not doing. Right, and then it's, you know, that actually cuts us off from this feeling. And it cuts us off from the connection to our hopes. Yes, you want to learn from your mistakes, for sure. But allow for this joy. This is why we're doing this, right? Allow for the joy, allow for the flow. Yeah. Okay, very good. So, yes, I want to answer a few more questions. Before I do so, let me just briefly say, as part of this, a symposium here, I'm also offering free posture tips. So you can send me a photo of yourself, either sitting on a chair or in the saddle, where something where I can see your posture, and you send me that photo. It can be a couple of photos. Don't go crazy about finding the perfect one. Just send me anything or describe in an email what your posture-related or horse-related issues are, and I'm then very happy to, I'm actually shooting you a little video with an exercise that you can do right away. And it's for, it's free. It's really a gift, a symposium gift. So you can just um, and use, and like just email me and uh, it will be to Carla at theintuitiverider.com. And I'm going to ask Ilvi to put that into the chat so that you can see it you will also see it on the symposium page you will see a little description of it so it's carla at the intuitive rider.com the intuitive rider is my 
company name, right? So I've, uh, I work with women all over the world. I do a lot of online courses and classes. I have really systematic programs that cover center writing, but also other things that are seed meditation related, human related, so that you can really become the host person you want to become. So if you want to find out more, this is really the first step to take when you send me your email and uh, or an email with your, with your photos and I can send you some feedback and then you get some free little videos with that as well that cover some of what we've talked about today. So, yeah, so if you put it into the chat, but now let me see, we've got a few more minutes. So let me see if we've got uh, some questions here that are just, you know, feedback from the exercise, something that you found. <laughs> Yeah, do you suggest doing this work on the ground first? Yes, absolutely. So when I teach my programs in person or also in, uh, online, I always have people do the exercises on the ground first, no matter what it is. And let's say we are covering topics like contact to the horse's mouth. Then I have people hold reins and either when they're by themselves or we do it online, I have them like, you know, hold them, put them around their foot so that they can feel what it feels like to hold the reins and what happens when you do certain things with the reins, etc. So, so even that, like everything, every topic that's out there, like half holes, transitions, um, riding turns, etc. everything can be broke, broken down to things that you can do in your living room like we just did. I just gave you some little teasers of possible exercises. Everything can be really introduced and felt in your own bodies on the chair first. So we're taking the horse out of the equation, feeling into ourselves, and now we can bring the horse back in, into the equation when we are already prepared, right? We've already understood things about ourselves. Sometimes we wonder why we can't ride on a proper circle or straight line. And we don't exactly know, is it the horse, is it the rider? And this way you can also distinguish, you can start finding out what your asymmetries are, for instance, right? What's the horse, what's you, right? And the questions like that, when we constantly ask ourselves, can be answered to a degree. Yeah, so it's always a good idea to get the awareness of things first, get some tools, like today your tools were the bubble gum and the dragon tail, right? So you've got some tools today, and then implement that into not just your writing, but into your everyday life. Like each time you sit down on a chair, you can think about bubble gum and dragon tail, right? And that makes it muscle memory. That makes your body really understand the thing. All right, so that's a great question. Let me see if I've got more. Does the tip of the tail point forwards, backwards, or straight down into the ground? It makes a difference how you measure it. Okay, absolutely. Straight down. Yeah, I like it vertically, like the dragon tail goes vertically down. So that's really just like a heavy weight at the bottom of your tailbone, really allows for a little bit of lengthening of your spine. It's not a big movement, it's really, really small. And also what I sometimes find people do is they, you know, might sit up straight and then they do the dragon tail and they start moving back. Yeah, that tells me that's far too much. It's a tiny movement. The shoulders don't move. It's just really your pelvis lengthening. Okay, amazing feelings, uh, Cornelia says. Awesome. So much better. Fantastic, right? This is, yeah, fantastic, right? This is the thing. When you start feeling it inside of yourself here on the ground, it just really makes such a, such a different. lovely. I feel my lower back arching, however, how to compensate. Yeah, sometimes, you know, we have to, like I've got a super straight spine, which is not a totally great thing to have either. Some people just have a different shaped spine, so you can go with what you have, right? You don't have to get your spine super straight. You just bring it, bring the dragon tail down a little bit to actually engage the really, really deep core muscles. Right, that's the idea behind it. We're engaging the deep, the psoas, P S O A S, core muscle, and then uh, that that gives you stability in the sound. That's that's the idea behind it. Yes, and thank you so much for the free posture tip. What if I don't have pictures? Would a few seconds for a video work as well? Absolutely. 
Yeah, video is even better because a photo is really just a moment in time. A video, I have a little bit more to see. So it can be like when it's under one minute, you even you usually can send it in the email or you can send it via messenger on Facebook or also let me know. I can give you a link to where you can upload it to. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So I think we're getting close to the end. You have a really comforting way to teach. Thank you. Yes. You know, it's, uh, thank you. Um, you know, I think it's, that's so important to be non judgmental about ourselves. And yes, obviously, as an instructor, I have to be like non judgmental. And I, I totally am. I'm really, you know, I go, I see what I have. And then I go, like, hey, come on, let's take the next step together. And we are all, you know, we are all trying our best, right? So what's the next step that we can take together? But I also make sure that I encourage the people I work with to be non-judgmental about themselves, right? That's, that's much harder. So really finding this joyful place, like finding a place where you can actually look at the moments where it's already working. And I'm sure you have these moments. That's why I call my business the intuitive writer because I find so many things are already working right intuitively you already have it but let's make this more repeatable make you more aware of it make you feel it more that's that's the really the idea behind all of this okay we really good so i think i see yeah so we're all good fantastic thank you thanks everybody for joining us and sorry if i did not answer all the questions if i didn't answer the questions here feel free to email me I'm really more than happy to respond to any type of email that you're sending me. And it's just so lovely to connect everybody. We've got 109 people here right now. So it's from all over the world. So that's really, really cool. Very good. So have a wonderful rest of your day. And I hope to connect more with some of you. Ilvi, thank you, thank you, thank you for putting this together. I know it's not a small deal. And uh, bye-bye.